This has to be one of the most interesting, weirdest, perplexing, confusing, and <laughs> will go down in history as one of the probably the most eventful launches of all time. Good afternoon, morning. Welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Runner T. Orchid Triple XL. 9000 series AMD second generation AM5 and a huge amount of expectation. I think this is something because of the generational improvements that AMD has been delivering consistently and some of them, you know, jumping like 20%. I think it's been a little bit built up, a little bit too built up. And I kind of feel sorry for them as a brand in some respect. Uh, they've done something as well here that's a little bit interesting and I feel like it's not really targeted for desktop market as much as it is for their mobile product as they are probably going to see well we're probably going to see more 12 and 16 core parts coming to the mobile market I just got a feeling based on how they set up the 9900x and the 9950x uh, this generation compared to previous ones and they've also exposed along with hardware unboxed, a, an inherent bug, an issue that's actually within Windows with regards to administrative privileges. Your local administrator account is just that, it's a local administrator. It's not like a system administrator. And because of that, that actually skews the performance results. Hardware unboxed has done an initial piece on this that they launched actually yesterday. And I will link that down in the description below because you might wanna look at that for your 7,000 series and 9,000 series, because he's clearly exposed an inherent bug there and you're losing considerable performance, like nine to 10% be just because of that. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit of a setup for you. And he's got the uh, way to do it in the video as well. And it is completely safe. You don't need to worry about any data loss or anything to that effect. But there's a bunch of stuff that's been exposed because of this. And so I'm just gonna go through more my, our data set and what we discovered and more benchmark results to show what has happened with that. As far as the technology goes, what they've done, 9700X, 9600X, exactly the same as the previous gen, just with the 4NM FinFET process. So just updated and they are basically just flat updates with a 10 to 15% improvement over a previous generation. Easy. No NPU. It is a thing that I'm kind of surprised, especially with the bigger chips, the 9900X. I had a look at its specification and there's absolutely no mention of that. So I think it's still down to 8700G if you want to get NPU. And I think when you are processing really big calculations and algorithms, you may want to have had that. Um, we'll see if a bigger APU part comes out as demand increases for those kinds of workloads. But for these, they technically spec on spec just improved. What they did differently, and what I think is going to be focused for the mobile market is they've done core parking. So for those who aren't uber technical, the cores are put into clusters, CCD clusters. And those clusters then talk with the cache individually uh, and it can cause latency between the cores if, for instance, it's going from a core in this cluster to a core in that cluster. So what they did with the 9900X and the 9950X is they did core parking or CCD parking in this instance. So there's whole clusters of cores that are basically parked. And then there's like, it's kind of like Intel's P-Core and E-Core split, but those are physical core changes. The quality of the cores doesn't seem to be changing. The Performance of them and the multi-threading workload seems to still be one for one. It's only on single core tasks. Now, this can cause latency in games and you are gonna see that from our benchmark results where that has happened. And so let's just start off with the test bench, the spec, and then we can get into that. So we've got the B650S Wi-Fi from MSI and they asked us to do X670, but we had a bunch of problems and uh, we just went for Old Faithful. And I think for 9600 and 9700X, it's probably what you're gonna be looking at is like a B850 or a B650. Uh, they're the only real differences that you would find on a day-to-day -day user basis is the amount of PCI Express lanes, but you still get eight from this chipset. So it's probably not gonna be an issue for most people. And then they suggested 6,000 megahertz memory for testing, even though 5600 is the official supported 
the newer boards are and especially the x870s we are going to be able to see as much as 8000 on ddr5 it does make quite a difference so rather we pulled a set of xpg lancers in order to do this test then we've got our 3070 ti which i know is not the nth degree but we're doing mostly 1440p gaming tests i have done a couple of 1080s uh, with fire strike and cs which are a little bit more sensitive to the processor but you'll see like when we get to dota even on 1440p uh, there is a, a noticeable difference between the cores and then we've got a 1tb or 2tb clev c730 so a good gen 4 nvme or gen 3 nvme um, and then 850 watt power supply and everything has been cooled by the h100 they have suggested for 9600x even that you could use a premium air cooler and i would echo that I saw on the spec when I got the initial reviewer sheet that there was still Curve Optimizer. And so I've engaged the Curve Optimizer because I wanted to see what the best potential performance was, regardless of wattage and heat. Because I've got uh, what I think a lot of you will have as a cooling solution. Evtech's going to be selling upgrade kits with 240mm RADs for a lot of these processors. And so you're going to get a real world example of what you can get out of a chip. I will do a video, a follow up video next week on how to do the curve optimization and show you a little bit of before and after and why you want to do it. But all of these have been negative offset by 20 points. So for those who know how to do it, then you know exactly what I'm basically, what he's cooking with. Now we're going to start with Fire Strike. This is where I first saw the problem. When you get the score on the base paper of it and it comes through and you see that it's only like a thousand points on the overall over the 9600X, I was already head scratching. Then I looked into the frame rates and they're very comparable between the 9600X and the 9900X. But the 9900X is clocked higher. It's because of that core parking interfering with where it's going. So it's maybe sometimes because it hasn't parked those cores effectively, they it was sending them through the other thread. I updated the driver, I did the game bar setup and it did, still didn't improve much in that in, in that facet. And then I was like, well, I'm, I'm already had done so much benchmarking. I'm not gonna go too much further because the point is still going to be made by the gaming benchmarks of what we're dealing with over here. So let's start off with Cinebench actually, um, with the multi-threading tests and the single core test versus our test bench 13600K. On its absolute best day, I got a 23,288. This was in the middle of winter, freezing cold, letting it boost as high as it can, probably drawing 220 watt at that point, and a 1962 single core, 9600X slapped it, um, well, all chips slapped it by a factor of 9 to 15%. You can see over there, the multi-threading 9700X fell behind. It's way less core count. I'm kind of not surprised by that. But 9900X was a very impressive 31,000. If we compare that to when I did 7,000 series, it's a general performance uplift across the board. So there's definitely inherently better cores. Cinebench is a great way to expose that. We look at the first of the gaming benchmarks. In Borderlands 3, on the high preset with 1440p, um, basically badass preset, the absolute maximum that it can do. All of the AMDs were faster, except the 9900X was just behind that. The 8700F gave me otherworldly performance compared to these results. Um, I got that up to like 115 on the single on the single core, which was weird. Uh, I think that that was anomalous, so I'm kind of putting that to the side. There's a weird 1% low from the 9700X, which I don't, I can't really attribute to anything, but maybe a bit of storage lag or something to that effect, because in general, the 9700X has been the best of the gaming chips. If we then move on to Crisis at 1440p in the very high preset, we see almost exactly the same thing. But notice 9600X and 9900X almost identical. Then for Metro, uh, on a 1440p extreme preset, it's a brow beater. It generally destroys PCs. It was only really the highs that improved over there versus the 13600K. And then RDR2, we had a huge performance uplift on the exact same settings. Massive, massive, massive gain. And that was about the only area I saw like a super big upgrade. And that's going to be great for GTA 5 fans and RP players and such. You're going to get really good performance from a 9000 series AMD in that facet. Now, Moving on to the rest of the game uh, benchmarks, I changed settings um, for these specific processes because 
I wanted to get a more decent, um, a, a clearer comparative between them um, with a lot more testing. And basically, you're looking at Cyberpunk, they're almost identical. You're looking at F1 2023 20, on 1440p, there's a first performance uplift from the 9900X. There, the core parking worked. Dota, the core parking more than worked. It literally one for one increased. And you get a 10 and a 16% better performance versus the 9600X. But that's about the only place that we're going to see that performance increase. Counter-Strike 2, 1080p, same problem. It's basically identical to the 9900X and the 9600X. Uh, Counter-Strike on 1440p Ultra, it actually was slightly slower with the 9900X versus 9600X. Geekbench, you're going to see a 1% to 3% performance uplift on single core and then a default gain based on multi-core workload. So that what we were expecting from a multi-core perspective. And then Blender, you're getting the exact same thing, except with a slight enhanced result for 9900X. It is 100% more cores, but you're getting 114% extra performance. And that's where that extra clock speed and cooling and such is coming in. So what is happening over here is on a multi-threaded workload, the core parking doesn't need to engage and it doesn't need to turn off that second CCD. And so there's no latency loss because it's just going to load the cores as much as humanly possible. And that's why you get results like that in Blender as an example. But the only place the core parking actually inherently worked was on the most developed and loved kind of game by the biggest gaming company in the world in Steam and Valve. And Hardware Unbox has basically shown that even with 9700X, you're going to get an improvement by just fixing the Windows bug that's pre present. Hopefully that comes out in a patch in the near future. But the core parking thing is like a 50-50. You can do exactly what you did with the 7900X3D and the 7950X3D, or you can have to, and use the Xbox Game Bar, which in and of itself is a little bit of a buggy child and then hope that it still works in your games. And so they've kind of delimited their product and made it like we weren't seeing people buying a lot of 12 core for gaming. Honestly, 8 core 16 thread with a 21,000 Cinebench is gonna be more than enough for gaming and streaming and such off the same PC, especially if you're using your graphics card to stream, you're using NVENC and you've got like a 4070 Super or something like that. It's gonna be perfect in that facet. But they're taking away from the uber enthusiast market and they're pushing you over to x3d if you look at really big channels that have like 20 billion staff and can do all of this benchmarking and have all of these samples on hand you're not going to be 3 db cache still it's still going to be the best and the fastest and especially per watt these didn't run uber hot only the 9900x exceeded like 150 watt uh, and went up in temperature the 9600x 9700x very easy to keep cool very contained in their wattage their base tdp and their performance compared to what i'm showing is probably eight to ten percent difference but considerably more power draw they are very efficient and that's why i think what we're experiencing here is the first step towards mobility market because us as desktop gamers we have to kind of be real and look at the market space from a PC perspective, mobile gaming or laptop gaming is growing way ahead of PC because the efficiency has improved so much that, for instance, the Lenovo Legion that I just reviewed, it's got like 17,000 on Cinebench from its mobile processor and the 4060 gets within spinning distance of 100 FPS in any game at 1080p on a mobile platform. To go to a desktop based platform, you're only gaining 10 or 15%. You're losing all of the mobility factor. And so that market is growing way ahead of desktop. Enthusiast market on desktop is kind of put on notice by the efficiency that's coming out from all of the manufacturers in this respect. The 3070 Ti compared to my 4070, even non-super, the 4070 thumps it in every single area and it went from 320 watt to 180 watt. And that's the trajectory that the market's going in. That's why Intel did P-Core, E-Core splits. That's why the Intel Ultra stuff is based on the same kind of technology. And that's exactly what AMD is chasing, in my opinion, based on this. I don't know a lot of people that bought even, and well, unless it was 3950X or 5900X, I don't know a lot of people that even bought that. They went for the, I'll take 5%, 10% uh, 
in a game loss in performance and rather save a bunch of money and go for 50 800x which is what a lot of people did even at launch even though even though that chip honestly at launch wasn't even that good like on a price versus performance just being real things like 5700x 3d around 5600x 3d i don't i don't think that's going to come to us as a normal desktop market but 5700x 3d is there i ran a 5800x 3d and game and stream absolutely perfectly off of it so tldr are these good chips yes do they have a bit of finicky stuff to work out over there also yes do i like the core parking not really it just kind of makes problems i didn't know about it as well um there wasn't like a lot to communicate that in the media that we were given for the review and so when things were coming out slower i was like having a bit of a panic um what do i think this means for you as a normal do you know you gamer that just wants a good cpu gpu kind of combo 9600x 9700x are more than good enough for anything that you want to do gaming wise you're not really going to bottleneck if you're very serious about esports games get a 3dv caching chip even if you go 7900x 3d so that you can do multi-threading later the core cool parking on that is a lot more developed 9900x 9950x if you need multi-threading and you don't want to spend a bunch at the plug they're going to be very good for you they can still game we can see with dota if you're patient and they work it out they are going to get the performance out of it it can boost and run harder than the other chips it's built to do that um it's just with this approach it does cause some inherent issues overall i think it's a really good launch for all of us because those people with 7000 series chips you can get uh, extra performance just by doing the fix from hardware unboxed like i said which we will link in the comments down below and I still think that it's good for the market that there are generational improvements and that AMD is still pushing hard and they're still trying to innovate. Uh, the cool parking for me in this instance, I think it, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. I saw with the larger reviewers, they pretty much unanimously agreed that it was probably not the best decision for the enthusiast market, but they're also saying we've got 7800X3D. If you want that best gaming performance, if you need multi-threading, get the bigger ones because we've work that out we're trying something new kind of work with us and then you can get the performance results is the tldr for this review anywho that is all i have for you on amd 9000 series if you have enjoyed this please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and i will see you on the flip side